G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Muta here. We need to address a very old injustice. Over two years ago, all the way back in Hermacraft Season 7, Zuma had the dream to produce the ultimate Blast Chamber multi-farm. And what happened next is a perfect example of what makes technical Minecraft so impenetrable to the wider community. And I found myself deeply unmotivated to work on this project over here. It is of course the Blast Chamber and there was so much more I was going to be doing around here and then this thing just started breaking over and over again and I couldn't figure out a solution or way to fix it. But I have been sent an apparently unbreakable design. Unbreakable design. Alright, alright, cut me some slack. It was the very first video I ever uploaded to YouTube. Besides, he got his revenge when I was using items from Hermitcraft Season 7 to test one of my new storages. Ah uh, yes, I don't think he was very happy with that blast chamber. What happened with this machine was simply an example of Murphy's Law. What can go wrong, will go wrong. But why is it that redstone machines break at all? Well a lot of the time, it can be due to edge cases not considered by the machine's designer. For example, you can see that this blast chamber works perfectly fine running at a constant speed. However, if I go ahead and introduce a random placement interval for my alt account, the blast chamber should fail very quickly. There we go. Breaks almost immediately. And this was a really disastrous edge case because any player trying to use this machine in survival would be at the whim of their unreliable server connection causing their player to desync from the server, placing those blocks at a random interval, and always breaking this machine. And this is exactly what Zuma experienced when using my very first blast chamber design. But fortunately, I learned from these mistakes and made a new smart blast chamber, which is completely immune to the issues that the previous design had. So in theory, there should be no edge cases which would cause this blast chamber to break under normal operating conditions. But then the operative word here is normal. You can have a situation where the player is happily chugging along with their nice unbreakable blast chamber, but all of a sudden, the player disconnects from the server. And maybe reconnects, tries to use the machine again, disconnects again repeatedly, and all of a sudden, you have all kinds of things going wrong. Because we have these unavoidable edge cases, such as the machine simply being unloaded while it is running, that is the reason why my smart blast chamber implements a fault detection mechanism that automatically sounds an alarm and switches off the input to the blast chamber if a single fault is detected like it was right here. Some of you might be thinking, Sounds like a skill issue to me, pilot. And that any technical player should be able to make their machines perfectly reliable even in the worst case scenario. Well something as simple and basic as the impulse item filter can be made extremely resistant to being unloaded while running. As you can see, this test has been running for a couple of hours and is still sorting items perfectly. But then consider this edge case. Inside of the item filter you have the first slot with the item you want to sort and the other four slots occupied by a dummy item. If even a single dummy item leaks into your storage system and gets into one of these filter hoppers, the filter with the extra items will have its signal strength overflow into adjacent slices, slowly eating away at the item filter in the adjacent slice until eventually it completely drains the adjacent filter and causes it to get reassigned. And in the worst case scenario, you might even get multiple items inside of these dummy items, which will cause the adjacent filter to drain even faster and even potentially make it lose dummy items and get reassigned to multiple item types at the same time, which will cause a cascading failure down your entire item filter array. As you can now see, every single filter is now losing their items. So the unfortunate truth is, no redstone contraption can be built to be perfectly reliable under every single edge case. And the consequence of this is that you will have to eventually go into the machine and fix it all manually. With all of this in mind, 
I've gone ahead and designed this multi-farm complex which I have tried to balance as much as possible utility as well as ease of repair. In this module right here, I have a super compact tree farm designed by Alex Yan which I modified to fit with this multi-farm system. Just above it is an igneous extruder which can produce both cobblestone and basalt. In this module, we have an area where the player can input resources to be dispensed to the player be placed down in the farm and converted into other block types. Then all of these conveyors lead into a centralized TNT efficient blast chamber which will convert our blocks back into items, collect those items and place them in a small storage unit right over here. All of the block conveyors make use of this amazing dustless smart piston designed by Floppy Donkey. The amazing thing about this smart piston is that it is completely free of any dust updates. If you watched one of my previous videos of becoming the flash using laggy redstone, you'll know that dust updates can be pretty lag inefficient. As I just demonstrated, with this dust grid flashing every 4 game ticks we increase the MSPT by 4 times. This is why I decided to redesign the smart blast chamber which previously made use of an enormous amount of dust spam to get signals all over the place. The new design is heaps more compact and has no flashing dust anywhere. This simply means using observers, rails, pistons, hoppers, comparators, repeaters, everything except for dust in order to transmit signals. This dustless requirement isn't as important for mechanisms where the signal does not change state very often. We tick warp the old smart blast chamber for a bit, we can see we get an MSPT of roughly 3.1. Running the new design, we get slightly less MSPT at 2.7. So by switching to dustless, we obtain a roughly 15% lag reduction. It's not a lot, but every little bit counts, especially when it comes to server performance. Alright, before I actually show you how to use the farm, I first want to cover the repairability issues and make sure that anybody who wants to use this farm can understand how to repair it if anything goes wrong. So of course, just like the previous smart blast chamber, the new dustless variant has its own completely dustless fault detection mechanism that detects whenever anything is going to go wrong. I've also put a lot of effort into making sure that when this fault detection is triggered it can disable things like the tree farm as well as the igneous extruder without causing any issues. Let's go ahead and make something really bad happen. So I have the most sensitive component, the tree farm, running and I'm going to blow up part of the blast chamber to see how quickly the fault detection can respond and prevent things from breaking further. So that looks like a pretty bad problem, but fortunately, the fault detection kicks in almost immediately, shutting off the tree farm and preventing any further damage from happening. The best practice would be to disable whatever farm is running, and then, in order to not go insane from the alarm, you can go ahead and disable the shutdown sequence, provided there aren't any farms with their switches on. Nothing else that you'll want to do is go through and remove all these blocks from the block shaper buffers. The block shaper buffers can be found by going down these stairs and standing on these trapdoor platforms. Then you can look inside of the buffer and see if there are any blocks still left in there. You also want to double check all of these block conveyors to make sure there's no blocks causing seizures such as this. If you find these, just remove the blocks so the block streams can move freely again. Standing in the center of the blast chamber, you might see a situation like this with the block conveyors. See how this piston is extended and is currently blocking the centralized block stream from entering the blast chamber. What you'll want to do then is go to the top and make sure you remove these blocks like so. Be very careful not to break this block here because there's flowing water meant for converting concrete that could spill into the blast chamber. Something that I've also noticed is that breaking those blocks has caused this log to get moved over to here. You want to break this block and put it back where it's supposed to be. 
Once that is done, simply send a block update to this piston, make sure it's retracted, and now blocks should be able to flow freely through this conveyor system. With the conveyors now moving freely again, we can grab ourselves a schematic and repair all of the damage to the blast chamber. What I suggest is putting the schematic into layer mode, like so. And then going through layer by layer, fixing any missing items. Once you are confident that you fixed up all the problems with the blast chamber, you want to go ahead and disable layer mode. Then, you can go into the schematic placement, to the schematic verifier, and just verify any potentially incorrect states that might be left over. So here, all of the extra logs inside of the blast chamber are a bit overwhelming. So if I do M plus V, that's a shortcut to the schematic verifier, I can go ahead to the extra blocks and make sure that I ignore all of those birch logs. For this part, you want to focus entirely on the blast chamber in the verifier, because other parts of the farm might show false verification errors which is simply due to the farm having been used and blocks being moved around. Because I designed this machine, I can take one look at the schematic verifier and know that what I am looking at should work perfectly fine if I start it up. If in doubt, just start the farm again and the fault detection will let you know if there are still any persistent issues. So I'm going to go ahead and start up the tree farm again. And we should see the blast chamber kick into action. So that is a demonstration of how fault detection can be your saving grace for using a farm that you might not fully understand yourself. However, I should point out that the blast chamber is not the only place we can experience catastrophic problems. Tree farms can also break in really horrible ways simply from unloading them while they are running. In order to deliberately induce a failure of the tree farm, which might be quite common as user error, I'm going to get Mr. Meter, my old account, to grow me some oak trees without activating the oak tree setting which prevents the tall oak trees from growing. If I go ahead and tell my old account to start placing down the oak saplings, we will start growing oak trees. And what we will see is eventually, there we go, I believe Yes, so a tall oak tree has grown at some point, leaving behind its branches. And this has caused the block conveyors for the tree farm to have a serious malfunction. Fortunately, I've added these systems right here to detect this malfunction and automatically shut down the tree farm to prevent causing further damage. So what we want to make sure we do is go ahead and switch off the tree farm. Then we want to fix all of these conveyors. So this should all be fixed. Now I want to go ahead to the inside of the growth chamber. And make sure I just clear all of this debris out from when that tree grew. So with all of that fixed up, I'm just going to go ahead and switch off these alarms. And this time, I should be able to switch on the oak setting that it pokes this finger down and makes sure that the tall oak trees can't actually grow. And once that's enabled, I can confidently go ahead and just restart the farm. As you can tell, I put in a lot of effort to maximize the utility of this farm and make it easy to repair. Because as I pointed out at the start of this video, it is inevitable that eventually someone is going to have a problem with this farm and have to fix it manually. Congratulations, now you should be fully qualified to fix this farm if anything goes wrong. Let's now go and look at all the features and how to use it. First of all, I have this shulker box filled with blue concrete powder. And I want to convert all this into blue concrete. All I want to do is jump up to the top here. This is the input for resources that you want to dispense to the player. So I could just pop the shulker box in, it gets placed in the shulker box unloader, and I can drop back down, jump inside of this cell, grab out a stack like so, 
And then all I need to do is start placing them down. So I don't need to hold down my right mouse button continuously. I'm just going to use a carpet command which makes my player use continuous. Now this entire system will consume one shulker box of resources and convert it into blocks in roughly 5 minutes and 45 seconds. However, let's just go ahead and tick warp to get things over and done with much faster. There we go. We've already finished that shulker box. Now an unfortunate consequence of using a TNT efficient blast chamber is that you have a lot of blocks getting cached in these block conveyors before they actually make it to the blast zone. If you are actually concerned about these blocks and actually want to pull them out of the system, what you can do is run over to the Igneous Extruder and start pushing in cobblestone to displace those items out. Eventually the cobblestone will fill up and push all the concrete out. So if we just tick walk for a bit to get this over with. There we go. All the concrete should be out now. And in order to obtain your items after they've been blasted, you can go to this simple little storage unit and find full shulker boxes in here. Now these shulker boxes tend to be combined with all the items that the blast chamber has processed. If not quite enough items make it to actually fill up another shulker box, what you can do is run up to here and access the items from the shulker box directly or you can force eject the shulker box by hitting this button and obtain it down here. This right here is a 2 times hopper speed mixed shulker box loader that doesn't lose any speed when it ejects the box. In order to input empty shulker boxes, you can just come up to the top here and look inside of these chests and put empty shulker boxes in here so that the box loader has access to them. So I just demonstrated converting concrete powder into concrete using this blast chamber. You can also do other block conversions, for example, wax copper blocks. Having a look around the back, you can find this input for block conversion utilities. So I'm going to go ahead and stick some honeycomb into here and then jump up to here put some copper blocks into the top and now I should be able to convert these copper blocks into wax copper the same procedure as before Let's grab a stack and then start placing down the blocks If instead you fancy some logs, you can head on down to the Universal Tree Farm. Just up here, we have the input for bone meal in shulker boxes. If you head down this ladder, you can find the interface containing the settings for all the various tree types that can be farmed. It is very important that you activate the setting for a tree before you try and farm at the tree farm, otherwise you may experience issues. It is pretty funny however, because birch trees can be farmed by default by the farm, meaning we don't technically need a setting for birch, and this lever is actually connected to nothing. Needless to say, given the importance of having settings for all the other tree types, if I didn't have this here, somebody would have made the assumption that birch trees weren't actually an option for this farm. It's consideration for small details like this in ergonomics that makes a difference between how people use a farm. In order to use the farm, you want to grab yourself the tree type that you want, activate its setting, switch on the tree farm, stand in this corner right here, stare at the center, and then hold down your right mouse button. There we go. Once it gets going, It'll start recycling the saplings to you, and then it'll get self-sustaining eventually. Here's a pretty cool feature you can add onto the tree farm. If you have an alt account, you can give them an axe, and have them strip the logs as they enter the blast chamber. This will of course be limited by the durability of the axe, but you could probably devise some system to replace the axe periodically. 
With my alt up there, stripping the logs, I can go ahead and start the farm once again. There we go, we're now getting strip logs fully automatically. So there we have it, Minecraft's ultimate omni farm. Down in the description, you should be able to download schematics of the two variants of this machine. There is a TNT duping variant, and another variant which uses dispense TNT, if you play on a server and don't want to use TNT duping. This is just one of those loose ends that I've always wanted to tie off. And hopefully Zuma can forgive me for that terrible design I made two years ago. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.